coming to you and we're inviting you to come into one of our services to bring glory and honor to God's name, to raise up a supernatural army with signs and wonders and miracles. Can you be part of this move? In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Pakistan, uh, we've heard some of the horrible things that's been happening there where the woman was stoned to death that she's pregnant and thus and thus and so forth. And they call it honor killing, and, and how many of you know it does not bring honor to our God? Our God that we serve is the God of love. And I want to say this, and, and I'll minister maybe next month, I want to minister a special message to the Muslim people around the world that your God that you call Allah is not the same God that we serve. The God that we serve, the Bible says, when God speaking, he said, I am the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. That's Israel. And he said, my name is Jehovah. Not one place will you ever find in the word of God where he calls himself Allah. And you'll never find where he says, I have a prophet by the name of Muhammad. No mention of it. So we'll address that. So I want to encourage all you brothers and sisters in Pakistan, these other Muslim nations, hang in there. Praise God. And uh, here in America, I'm fighting a fight here with the so-called Christians. Everybody in America is a Christian, but nobody wants to serve God. And I'll be addressing some of those things tonight. And uh, how many of you know that we're getting closer to the end days? But if any of you believe in pre-trib, it's not in the Bible. So I'll just tell you that we're going to be here to see the, the return of the Antichrist. And uh, we're going to see great persecution falling away of the church and so forth. And I'd like to uh, title my message tonight, 17 Reasons Why No Answer to Our Prayer. Somebody say, 17 Reasons Why No Answer to Our Prayer. How many of you ever prayed, and it seems like God don't even answer your prayers? And if God does not answer your prayers, that must mean that something's a matter with our life. Somebody say, Amen. So I want to go to the book of Isaiah. We're reading out the book of Isaiah. We taught Bible study on this uh, Tuesday night and so forth. But how many of you know the Word of God never changes? And I want to say something. There's still Ten Commandments. And we're really going to be addressing that very hard. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this great privilege and this great honor to be here, Lord, to minister to the people all around this world. And, Father, I know that most people will get mad at this message, and God, truly, Lord, all those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Lord, we're in a day that the people does not want to hear the truth. They want to have their ears tickled, and they want to hold on to fables and, and, uh, and all these things, Lord, that just leads them straight down to the path of hell. We find the church has lost their first love. We find the church is lukewarm and cold, and God, your word says, not my word, because you're lukewarm, because you left your first love, uh, it means hell, Lord. But people don't even want to say hell any longer. They want to say out of fellowship, they're not going to the right place or this or that. But God, we, we see such perversion going on in America and around this world. Homosexuality is just a rise. And then everybody, that we, we, I just heard a couple minutes ago, that right here in Pennsylvania, there's over 400 churches now that has uh, opened up the doors to gays. Lord, and accepts the gay marriages, accepts the gay lifestyle. Lord, we know it's not your word. And God, I rebuke and we rebuke that foul devil of compromise in Jesus' name. And the whole church said amen. I want to, for us to go word by word, verse by verse, in the book of Isaiah. And I want you to understand that Isaiah is a man of God, that God had raised up as a prophet, and he's got to sign the alarm in these last days. He's the one that had prophesied about the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and how he's going to be born, and thus and thus. Isaiah also, because of his stand for God, he was sold asunder in half. He's put into a log, and he was sold in half. All the people that really stands up for the Lord and preaches as it is upsets all kinds of people around this world. So you never find a true prophet or a true minister of God that preaches the full word of God that is well loved. My Bible says in the Beatitudes, woe when all men speaks well of you. So if all you ministers, no matter where you are, if everybody's talking good about you, you're not preaching the word of God. 
And here in America, most ministers say, I cannot preach like you, Brother Humphrey, because nobody will come back. So what is it is a compromising spirit. And we find that here in America, everybody is Christians. And I'll, I'll address that a little bit more here. They say they're Christians, but they do not serve God. Uh, so I'll, I'll address that a little bit more. And God is speaking to Isaiah, Isaiah 58, and he's talking about his people. And, and I want you to see how people can say they love the Lord and so forth, but their life is a life of sin. They believe they're okay, but they're not okay. And if you address that person about a situation in their life, most of them will get mad at you. Come on. And I have to address some people here pretty shortly about certain things in their life and so forth. And a woman that came had a dream. A pastor's wife had a dream just come down all the way from out of state and so forth. Came and said about this dream she had and where I had to, at our meetings, did not know that we have meetings in New York, Pennsylvania, at the Old Country Buffet every Tuesday night of Bible study. And she said she seen me sitting at these tables in a restaurant. She did not know nothing about this. And where things got out of order and I took both fists and come down on the table, and I said, I will not have it. I'm not going to put up with this. How many of you know you have to set things in order? So there's a lot of things that if you're a true minister of God, you're going to have to bring it to order. And if you don't, a little leaven leavens a whole lump. Isaiah 58, verse 1, and God's speaking to Isaiah, and he wants, wants him to do something. He said to Isaiah, listen to what he said to Isaiah. He said, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people, what did he say, my people, their transgressions, the house of Jacob, their sins. He says to him, he said, cry out, don't, don't come out here like Joel Osteen. Yes, I said Joel Osteen. <laughs> Whispering and so forth, and won't say anything uh, to upset anybody. He said, cry aloud, lift up your voice like a trumpet. And the Bible talks in Revelation chapter 1, whenever the Lord spoke, he was like a giant trumpet. And, and, and he fell as one dead. And so Jesus is not going to say, How many of you know he's going to speak aloud? The Bible says the voice sounded like many running, uh, thundering waters. He said, Lift up that voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. Spare not. And there's, don't, don't cut a corner. So many ministers of you out there, no matter where you are here in the States or wherever, you will spare not because you're afraid you'll hurt so-and-so's feeling or upset so-and-so and this and that. So you will not say anything or address that situation. And what's going on? You're leading them into sin. They're going to end up in hell, including you. And my Bible says if you warn them not, their blood will be required upon your hands. So he tells Isaiah, he says, uh, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and Jacob their house of sin. So that's the whole house of Israel. Now, he says something here that really sounds like they're very great people. He said, yet they seek me daily. How often do they seek me? Every day. They seek me, not like here in America, uh, where people go to church every now and then. Not every, every day they're seeking the Lord back in these days. He said, they seek me daily, listen to these words, and delight to know my ways as a nation. They're happy to know the ways of God as a nation. Is America a God-fearing nation? No. Is there other nations in this world a God-fearing nation? No. There's not a God-fearing nation including Israel upon the face of the earth. Everybody has turned to their own wicked ways. And he said, as a nation, they delight. L listen to the words of it. He says, yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. How many of you would like to be in a nation that's doing righteousness? And this is the way it was then, in these days. But see, it sounds so good, but we find out there's 17 reasons why God's not answering their prayers, even though they're fasting and praying. God is not going to answer their prayers. Here they go, they're going through this, did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of God. They, they, they ask of me ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to their God. They want to know the truth. They take delight. I, I, I want to know the truth. How many of you know the truth will set you free? But nowadays, all around the world, most people don't want to know the truth. 
Why go to a doctor if you're feeling sickly and so forth and you know something's a matter and you say, doctor, but I don't want you to tell me the truth. I want you to tell me a lie. How many of you know what that does? All that's going to do is cause that person to end up dying. The doctor has to say, the truth is this here. You've got this sickness and this and that, and if you don't do this and this, you're going to die. So they want to know the truth. But nowadays, people say, no, we'll heap to themselves preachers, teachers, to tickle with our ears. We'll turn our ears from the truth unto fables. So we find out homosexuality and all these other things all around this world is being preached as truth, but it's not the truth. God loves you. Oh, he loves us, but he hates the sin. So we, we find this, this, the nation of Israel and Judea is really looking like a strong, God-fearing people. Next verse says, verse 3 says, now this is them complaining. Now this is God speaking to Isaiah. This is what they're saying to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and take no knowledge? They're saying we're fasting and praying, and as we go down through, we'll find out that they don't just fast without food and water. They actually set sackcloth and ashes. They're vexing their souls. They're really being serious about this. And they say, why is it that we fast and pray and you don't take, pay no attention? There's nothing happening. Why is it? Why? A lot of people say, well, I fast and pray and I don't get no answer. There's a reason why. So here they are. They, they recognize something's a matter. We're fasting and we're praying. We're seeking God. But he's not paying attention to us. <sighs> My God. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Now, the Lord speaks in the same verse. I wish this part would be down in verse 4 because it's where God's speaking back. He says through the prophet Isaiah to them, he said, Behold, in the days of your fast, you find pleasures and exact all your labors. The word exact means you oppress your labors. In other words, he said, the day that you're fasting, he said, you're not really afflicting your soul. You're finding pleasures. And you demand people that's working for you, you want everything out of them. And you don't have a heart of love. And you're doing your own thing. How many of you know so many times we say we love God, but we do our own thing? We'll get to that part in a minute. And it goes on to describe what their sin is. He says, behold, you, you verse 4, he said, behold, you fast. Now listen to these things here. He says, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with a fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on a high. He said, you're fasting for what? For strife. What is strife? It's nothing more than arguments, confusion, disagreements, strife. Not in one, one accord. Strife. He said, you're fasting for this. He said, and debate. You're right, or I'm right, and you're wrong. Well, I believe it this way, you believe it that way. The, not one agreement. They're totally out of harmony. And he said, and to smite with a fist of wickedness. Did you ever hear the Christians fight with one another? Did you ever hear a husband's wife punch on each other? And people fasting and praying and say, God, they've done me wrong, they've hurt me in this and that all these years. Kill them, I pray. Hard-hearted people that says they love God. For God so loved the what? The world that he gave his only begotten son. He loves Hitler. He loves, and to you brothers and sisters in Pakistan, and to the mother and father that lost that girl, and, and to the relatives and everything, I know that it hurts you. I can, cannot imagine how to see your daughter. We understand she's pregnant, stoned to death. The one guy said he remembers the first brick that hit her in the side of the head. And she dies. I can understand how you feel those people that have done that to her, how you'd want to literally kill them. And it'd be very easy to say, oh, God, kill them, kill them, kill them. But he doesn't want us to kill them. He wants us to loose those bands of wickedness. So we'll get into that in a couple minutes. But he said, you're fasting for strife. My husband ain't treating me right. My kids ain't doing this. And my boss ain't doing that. And so and so. And the government and this and that. Oh, God. 
you know, all these things. And if you, you can't get along, you start punching out. There's no use raising your hands right there wherever you are. Many of us can say, and, and I walked in church and you can see my hands is nothing but all busted up and so forth. It looks like I might have been in a fight with some person, but I've been fighting with the devil. I'm all caught up. But how many of you know these hands are full of scars through the 72 years I've lived of horrible things I've had to go through? And a lot of that is actual fights, scars. How many of you know that's not the way God wants to win this world? You can't beat it into somebody. And that, there's Muslim people, if you do not convert over to Muslims, you're going to be stoned to death. That's not love. So we'll address that situation more. And, I, and for some of you Muslims that happen to turn, turn in, your God can't answer your prayers. You know why your God can't answer your prayers? Because he's not real. But when you say in the name of Jesus, and I'll tell you stories about when I was in Muslim nations and so forth, the power of God, how they just slayed them in the spirit and made believers out of them. But we find that the Lord is saying here, he's rebuking them. Verse 4, Behold, you fast, for strife, debate, and smite with officials of wickedness. He said, you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice be heard on high. You're not supposed to fast that way. People say, well, I'm the only one. You don't know what I go through. Oh, shut up. We're all going through things. If we're not going through something right now, we will be going through something. All those that live God in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution and they're going to be attacked by the devil. But here they are, they're supposed to be God-fearing people. They want to know the truth. Verse 5, he, the Lord speaks, he said, Is it such a fast that I have chosen? In other words, is this, is this the kind of fast that I want? For you fast and pray and come to me and say, God, hit them with a fist, beat them up, kill them, you know, debate and, and, and all this confusion. God, show them I'm the only one. No. He said, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? This is only a one-day fast they're doing it. So they're afflicting their soul to make their voice be heard on high. And he describes how they've done it. Is it to bow down thy head as a bulrush? And they're, they're sitting there in sackcloth and ashes with their head bowed down as a weed, you know, with their head bent over and so forth. He says, as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him, Here's a sackcloth that makes you itch and so forth, and ashes will make you burn. So they're set in so-called misery, and God will accept this because I am really putting effort into this. And it looks like they're serious, but how many of you, you could be serious and be sincerely wrong? Apostle Paul was serious when he went out and killed the Christians, men, women, children, and so forth. He was very zealous for God. He thought he was doing God a great favor, even as the Muslims think they're doing their God a great favor by killing everybody else that don't believe their way, but they're sincerely wrong. And Paul had to find out, he had to come face to face with Jesus, and the power of the Lord blinded him and knocked him to the ground. And he heard the voice of Jesus say, Paul, Paul, or Saul in those days, before his name was changed to Paul, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus that thou persecutes. And Paul became the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament. But how many of you know people was praying for him too? So here's these people that really thinks that they are godly people and they have sin in their life. And we're going to find out there's 17 things that they have to do before God will even hear their prayers. Look at somebody and say, it's going to get sticky before this message is over. So I want to tell you people out there, the best thing for you to do right now, if you don't want to hear the truth, turn this channel off. Go, go watch something else. Go, 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 because I'll tell you what, if you listen to it, you're going to hear the truth of God's word, not Brother Humphrey's word, but God's word. And if you do what he says, God will answer your prayers. But if you don't do what he says, he's not going to hear your prayers. Somebody say, my God. 
Say, my God, help me. Say, my God, help us. Verse 6. Now he talks about the kind of fast that he wants. Verse 6 and 7, and you need to underline it in your Bible or highlight it with a marker or whatever. He says, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose, everybody say loose, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke. He said, I want you to fast and pray for this. Listen to it one more time. To loose the bands of wickedness. How many of you know people that's living wicked? You don't turn around and say, God, kill them. They're so wicked. They're so evil. No, God, we're fast and pray that you would loose those bands of wickedness. Set them free. Set them free. My God, set them free. How many of you know most people get mad at that person? They should not get mad at that person. They should get mad at Satan, the power of hell that's controlling that person. You see somebody in a sin, we shouldn't walk up and say, oh, I, all I want to do is just punch you right square in the mouth. No, you need to say, it's the devil working on you. It's the power of the hell, but I'll pray for you that God will loose. That's what the Bible says. What you bind in heaven, I'll bind on earth, or what you, what you bind on earth, rather. I'll bind in heaven what you loose in heaven, or on earth, I'll loose in heaven. So we're supposed to do this kind of stuff. But how many of you know, a lot of people after a while, after they've been hurt so long, they don't realize it, but they, now they start to harbor hatred, unforgiveness. You've hurt me all these years and all this and that, and you know what? I just pray that God will kill you and take you out of here. And you say something to them about that's not right. We had a woman in our meeting just recently. She said, my husband's the devil, and you can see the spirit of hell coming up on her. Another sister was upset about her husband. You can see her just, and I have to address these people. I have to address these situations. I mean, that's not the way God wants it. Somebody say amen. That kind of stuff hinders our prayers. He said, if you want to fast and pray, he said, listen, this is what we're supposed to pray. He said, is not this the fast I've chosen to loose those bands of wickedness? To undo the heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. That you break every yoke. Is the church really doing that? How many people is really doing what God says we're supposed to do? Well, God will take care of them. We have a job. And you start to tell people this kind of stuff and say, you know what? You're harboring hard, hard, hard feelings. But you don't know what I've went through. You don't know what I've lived with. Everybody can say you don't know. What, you know what I tell people? Shut up. Stop complaining about your problems. We all have a certain amount of problems. Somebody say it's not easy being a Christian. So any of you people out there, no matter where you are, if you say you're a Christian and you're living a life for God, I got news for you. You're fighting a fight. This is why Paul said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Somebody say amen. Somebody say 17 things. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens? How many know people are under heavy burdens? There's all kinds of burdens. People are so burdened down that they're committing suicide. They can't face another day. Even my own life, before I got saved, I took my car, took three bottles of wine, was drinking it and so forth. My wife and I, the devil had moved in on us, and we was fighting all the time, had cops and this and that. And I got so fed up with life that we couldn't even agree on anything. You know whose fault it was? Mine. I treated her like a dog. Picked her up over the head when she was pregnant with my first child and throwed her. Crippled my wife. Took a belt and almost tore, with the belt buckle, almost tore the eye out of my uh, one son. I could tell you horrible things. How I'd go in the bathroom and look at my face in there and take my fist and punch the mirror out. You know what? I didn't want to be that way. But the power of the hell was so strong on me, I could not change my way. Anybody listen to me out there? Some of you know what I'm talking about. You don't want to be like that. 
her and I would fight and this and that, and then I'd say, went to prison and stuff like that. I'd say to her, hon, I'm, I'm going to straighten up. I'm, I'm not going to act that way. I'm not going to treat you anymore. You know what she'd say? I've heard that many times before. I might do good for a couple of days, but you know that power of hell that was back in me would manifest itself and I'd be back to the same old thing. You know what I needed? Anybody know what I needed then? I needed someone praying for me. They're praying to loose those bands of wicked, set me free. Somebody say, Hallelujah. All kinds of people say, hey, He deserves to go to hell. Hurting people, oppressed. I need someone to stand beside me a little bit. As an old military man, we just celebrated 70 years of D-Day, landing on Normandy. They gave their life for America. They gave their life for America. And these old timers that they interviewed and so forth stood there and tears running down in their face. He said, one old man said, we all gave something, but some of them gave everything. How many of you know they gave their life? And we're so self-righteous, so spiritual hogs, that's only me. Me, 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 me. Look at me, 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 me. What about them? Brother Humphrey, that's your word. No, that's not my word. That's God's word. I'm just a mailman delivering what he said. You know, here we are in a big church. I'm going to speak plainly. This church probably holds, what, three, four hundred people? We only have a couple people here. You know why? We'll get to it here in a couple minutes. Is this not the fast I chose to loose the bands of wickedness? Loose those bands of wicked people, wicked lies, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. How, did you ever meet somebody that was ever, ever in oppression? Sister Joan, the church secretary, most of you know her. Years ago, she went through so much, she literally lost her mind. They had to put her in a hospital, nervous breakdown, caused all kinds of heart trouble and this and that and so forth because of the stuff she's going oppressed. Nobody to stand with her. How many of you know that's when we all need to gather around and say, you're going through a lot, but I'm praying with you. I'll stand with you. Come on. I'll support you. I'll take you by the hand. Of course, we have to tell one another the truth. You've got to do your part. See, Elijah got to the same place. After he killed 850 prophets of Baal and so forth, he did his great work for God. Jezebel says, before this day's over, I'll have his head. He run a day's journey to make sure this would not happen and lay underneath the juniper tree and went to sleep. And the angel come and woke him. He said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Nobody knows what I'm going through. And the Lord tells us, I reserved 7,000. He laid down and went to sleep. The angel woke him up twice and tried to get him back on his feet. But that oppressive spirit got to him that he lost his calling. Listen to me, ministers out there. Listen. The Lord says, go and anoint such and such of a king and anoint Elijah to stand in your place. In other words, if you're not going to line up, I'll give someone else your position. Moses, the same identical thing. Moses got so angry with the people and the situation going on, and it seemed like nobody was standing with him. He said, what am I, a sucking father? i got to get sucked to all these people. If it be so, kill me, I pray thee. The Lord said, the people, he said, the people cried out, they want water. The Lord said, speak to the rock. Like talking to Jesus. And he takes the rod, and not just once, but twice, he smacks a rock, represents he hit like Jesus. And the Lord said, because of this, because of what? The oppression, the, the pressure he's under and so forth. You shall see the promised land, but you're not going in. And then he says, go and anoint Joshua to stand in your place to take your place. This is why the Bible says he'll remove our candlestick and somebody else will take our place. How many of you know it's not easy? 
but we've got to do our part. Anybody listen to me out there? I talk to people all the time, whether they're smoking or not, going to church and so forth, and they give me all the reasons why they do it. And I say, you know what? That kind of excuse won't be good enough for the Lord. for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray lay hands on you and in me and expect signs wonders and miracles in your life starting today you will never be the same our website is upperroomministry.net if you would like to schedule a speaking engagement contact our ministry all glory to jesus amen amen <laughs>